Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and we're going to talk about operating your mobile radio from a battery pack. Um, rather than AC power or a uh, vehicle, uh, you may have to do so for some reason or the other, whether or not you're doing it for fun or out of necessity. Um, most of the time, we've always used gel cell batteries. This is a 7 amp hour battery, which is pretty, pretty generic. They use them in alarm cabinets, and they use them in... Um, emergency lighting and UPS's and whatnot and uh, they're a great battery and they're a good option uh, the drawback is is the weight of it if you're going man portable uh, a pack like this weighs five pounds well it's a little under five pounds but uh, I've got a couple other options here that I've been messing with and uh, I'm gonna go over those right now one of these is in here. It's a pouch for an Accuracy International mag, and using 18650s, which uh, I don't know if you guys are into flashlights, and you got like one of these Dewopper flashlights here. You probably got several of these laying around. Um, these batteries are supposedly three and a half amp hour, 3500 milliamp hour batteries. Uh, I'm always hesitant to. Uh, believe battery vendors when they tell me something uh, but these are the NCR 18650B's and for these things is like thirty dollars I believe on Amazon and what I've done is I've just I got a battery holder from eBay for three ninety nine and I went ahead and I wired it together I tried a couple options because when it's fully charged you're pushing out sixteen point seven volts which uh, most radios can tolerate that, but uh, I didn't want to do that, so I tried a couple different options. Uh, the first option I tried was I built a, a high current voltage regulator and put it in here, so you can see that right there, or I can plug that in between in between the battery pack and the radio, and that regulates the voltage down to 13.8 volts. Uh, at about five amps of current though you get some voltage sag out of that which I didn't really want so what I decided to do was is consider this as an additional piece of equipment to carry in the field although it only weighs uh, eight ounces I decided to uh, go away from that and what I did instead was I just added a diode uh, the diode I put in there is just a 10A10 diode uh, it's nothing crazy you can get these things for like 35 cents a piece but it's a uh, 10 amp diode and uh, one of those provides enough voltage drop to get the thing down to about 16 volts idling now when you hook it up to your radio and you start to draw power off of it it drops it back down to like uh, 15 and a half which I feel comfortable with using that uh, I tried a couple other ways to bring it down even further I tried putting diodes across each cell and um, I decided against that it dropped the voltage too much and I got quite a bit of voltage sag and the um, the diode does get hot if you're transmitting for two minutes the suckers pretty hot I mean it, if you got some pain tolerance you can put your finger on it let me put it that way so I did insulate it with some uh, heat shrink there but uh, I'll go ahead and show you here power up our radio here. This radio is just a uh, commercial UHF mobile radio. It draws about 6 amps on transmit and at uh, right now receiving, uh, excuse me, not receiving, sitting here idle, squelched, it's about a quarter of an amp a draw and when it's unsquelched and receiving it's about uh, 0.35 amps. So. You can see right now we're sitting at 15.34 volts, which I'm safe with that. And transmitting with that much draw, it still keeps it over 12 volts. And it snaps right back. So these batteries do work really well for this application. Man, it's something that's inexpensive to do. Um, the way I roll it is I have a uh, little... It's not that pouch. I've got this pouch here. And I've got the um, Nightcore IntelliCharger, which is a 
pretty good charger. They've got some newer ones that are about the same price point that have a digital display. I think Through Night makes it, and those are uh, worth looking at too. But this is an AC or a DC charger, and it does double A's, 18650s, CR 123s, uh, or RCR 123s. So uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck with one of these chargers. And I think these are like $25. And I carry some extra cells here that are charged. And I have a uh, AC power cord for the charger and a DC cord for the charger, which I also split with a power pole in case I had some other solution to uh, whoops plug into it to run the thing off of another source of DC power. If I had a power pole in the vehicle and, or a power supply or whatever have you and didn't have the AC cord. So I've got some options there. Uh, this entire setup here weighs... Uh, just under two pounds believe it or not and that being the case it's half the weight of your traditional gel cell battery so you can see and theoretically it's the same capacity so I've used this battery pack with my FT817 and uh, it will run whisper all night uh, without a problem uh, of course that draws a lot less current but uh, for something inexpensive to construct yourself and light in weight, I think this is a pretty good option. Now another option you can go with, which is a little bit later, newer technology and more money, and this whole setup here weighs one and three quarter pounds, is just one of these uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries for the LifePo 4. And uh, this one here, it, it's kind of interesting because it's supposed to be a 7 to 9 amp hour acid battery equivalent, but it only rates it for 25.6 watt hours. I'm going to do some testing with this to figure out exactly how long that battery lasts in comparison with this one. But that and the charger weighs 1 and 3 quarter pounds, so that's another option to save yourself some weight too. And it's not much money. I mean, this, this battery and this charger here was about $100. So... Anyway, I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.